the Young Ophthalmology Committee addresses the needs of a particular group of people, young ophthalmologists. That is a question I always get asked, who are young ophthalmologists? Uh, we don't define young ophthalmologists by age, but rather by stage of their career. So it is uh, ophthalmologists who are within five years of training or within the actual training program itself. And the reason we do that is because uh, you could be of any age and still doing a training program, but it is that stage of, the, of your career that makes you quite vulnerable and, and anxious. It is a time of uncertainty, it's a time of insecurity where you don't know when uh, your next job is going to be and uh, you, you depend on connections and networking uh, which you might not get uh, in order to, to, to progress to the next stage of your career. Um, I think the next the thing is, is, is the fact that we are trying to address the needs of European ophthalmologists, which is quite, uh, quite a unique uh, type of young ophthalmologist. It's not like uh, American uh, ophthalmologists where immediately if you think of an American young ophthalmologist, you think of a particular standardized career path. You know, someone going from medical school to three years of, um, of uh, residency and then ending up in an attendant post in, in, in America. In Europe it's completely different, there's huge diversity. You know, some people get very long training programs, very well structured, others get very poorly structured training programs, very little surgery and hands-on experience, and then get registration and feel completely incompetent or do not have the actual skills of, uh, of performing what they're expected to perform at the end of it. So uh, that is what we're trying to address, the needs of this particular niche, niche of people. I think one of the things have, who have come up this meeting is to try to get into the residential training again, how, how much training people are actually receiving. And from our point of view, we are quite focused about the surgical needs because that's lacking. It's extremely lacking all over Europe. It's no standardised thing. And in many countries, you're not allowed to touch anything. You don't achieve any surgical training while you are in residency. Uh, so, so we have a huge gap. And that's also one of the main obstacles when people want to get on. Because if you are applying for a fellowship, you need surgical experience. They will ask you, how many FACOs did you do? Well, I've witnessed 10. Well, you need to do at least 500 to get a position here. So it's a catch-22 where, where you, can't, you can't really get into it. So we, we need to, to pay attention on, on the training people are receiving. And, and we do that in, in many ways. You can say we, we had a, um, a study some years ago where we went into it and had a picture of how disastrous it is. But I think we're going to repeat that. So I guess the, the needs of young ophthalmologists, as Mary Louise is quite rightly saying, is the most important one is hands-on surgical training. It is lacking yeah. and opportunities are decreasing in every country actually, um, even the ones which traditionally had uh, lots and lots of surgery, such as the UK, you know, opportunities to operate are becoming less and less. Um, uh, and in other countries, it's, e it's getting even worse. So, uh, Yeah, and also the supervision. And supervision and, and mentoring. Yeah, uh, yeah and, and because one thing is to get let into theatre, but if you're not supervised, mm. then, then how do you know if it's good enough and how do you improve your skills? Mm. And another thing that, that I had a talk about that yesterday, where we, we emphasized the importance of having a curriculum, because that's also a weak point, because if you have a curriculum, then it's much more easy to discuss, well, we agreed on this. You, you told me that I would learn this skill, and I'm not improving, you're, you're not giving me time. Can we find a deal? So, so the negotiation about the curriculum and creating curriculums is really, really essential, both for residency and post-residential positions, because that's the way to gain what we actually need. So what we're doing at the SOEYO committee is three things to address these needs. Okay, so in the, in the first instance, we're trying to provide a platform to offer more and more training opportunities for our young ophthalmologists across Europe. So in a session, in a, in a meeting like, like here, for example, uh, we, have all, we have tried to organize dry labs 
uh, at which are basically laboratories where young ophthalmologists can come and practice surgery outside an operating theatre environment on plastic artificial eyes, you know, um, which are very realistic, you know, and they and that uh, and are uh, supervised by by experts in the field. And this allows them to be able to speed up their learning curve in surgery in a very relaxed, informal environment. So that then when they go back home and uh, uh, have the real situation of, 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 of uh, operating within, in an operating theatre, you know, they, they have already improved the, the, um, uh, their learning curve dramatically and ma can maximise the time in theatre. So that's the first thing. Other, other things we're doing for, for uh, surgery actually are video sessions. Video uh, sessions. We're, we're yeah. having interactive video sessions here at the conference in our YO lounge where we discuss step by step um, uh, uh, common surgical um, operations, Proce yeah. procedures such as like cataract or such as lateral cantal strip or lateral tercet strip, which are lids, basic lid operations. And I think these are really important because in this era, you know, anyone can go and read it off a book or anyone can go and find YouTube. it on the internet <laughs> or YouTube. But what is lacking is that interaction, that ability to have a face-to-face -face connection with, with an expert in the field and discuss where the problems really are. So that's our, our, our priority, the surgical training. Another, another issue is also to get people to get a network. Exactly. And by encouraging that, we, we use our homepage, we use the face-to-face -face meetings, but we also created a mini-exchange where we change working position. We, we, go, we, we change names, draw from a basket. I have, I have a new friend in Belgium, for example. So I will visit Belgium for two or three days, follow my new friend to work, see how a clinic in Belgium works. I have no clue. Uh, and, and she will come to Copenhagen, follow me to work and see how we are doing at my department. How can we learn from each other? Are they doing something more intelligent, more efficient? And, and I, I'm hoping and what I'm hearing from people is that then you suddenly have a friend. The joke at the Yo Lounge the other day was that there were so many Polish young ophthalmologists coming to this conference and they signed up for this so everyone had a Polish friend. You have a friend in Poland, but I mean, the, the significance of this, that people actually know each other, is quite high. And it makes the quality of going to this meeting, attending things, is raising because now you suddenly know more people. It's, it's, it's a very nice thing also to witness. I've been in this for some years now and to see how people connect and make friends, that's beautiful. So, um, so uh, as Marie Louise was saying, in summary, we're trying to help increase surgical training opportunities. We're offering a network and uh, for uh, an opportunity, a platform for networking and communicating with each other, which is so important, especially in all these diverse countries. And thirdly, something we haven't mentioned yet, is our fellowship platform. Yeah. You know, there's a huge need uh, for knowledge about where these fellowships to go and get training within Europe are. And they're quite hidden and very difficult to find. So here at SOE, we have created a, a fellowship directory, which is now available on, on our web, web page, homepage, where <coughs> young ophthalmologists can go in one place and see what is available and at what time uh, to try and go and <coughs> supplement their training. Yeah, but also we, we just received mo funding and money to, to expand it so it will be a search engine. And, and that makes it also much easier to update. That's <coughs> always the tricky part, that you heard about something, but you can't find the actual link. Um, but I hope this will improve, because there are fellowships, not many, but there are possibilities for those who are interested. And then, then I think a new focus will also be more about the residency, to increase the learning <coughs> and education within the residency and we are doing that in collaboration with the EBO exam that's one of our aims as well to promote the EBO because that's a way to secure standardization and raise the educational level within Europe. If you go on internet and look for soevision.org you can find a banner called the YO. Click on that and we have a new section, we have a guide how to go through the ICO exam and the EBO. We have a lot of links, links for educational resources. We have the database for fellowships just presented and we have some more information about ourselves. We have a news page 
And for all yours across Europe, please go in and sign up for our newsletter because that's the only way we can communicate and get into contact. And we have lots of good stuff for the needs of education across Europe. Next year's event, so we, there is going to be a European um, Med Young Ophthalmologist meeting. Once again, it's the third time that it's being organized. It's going to be held in Krakow and Poland. Um, we fully support, as the SOEYL committee, this event. Um, it's been held previously in Oviedo, four, in Porto, four years ago, and two years ago in, in Oviedo. And we really look forward to the next one in, in uh, um, in Krakow. But, but what you can say is also that the special thing about this meeting is that it's arranged by Yo. We have a Polish young ophthalmologist team, hard working people, and they will find the best speakers of young ophthalmologists across Europe to come and give talks on different subspecialities, education, training for Yo's. So it's by Yo's, for Yo's and that's what makes it so special.